Well, today on the boiling point, we're going to be talking relief valves, not about what they do, but actually how to size them. We're going to be uh, speaking with Brian Grandstaff today. Before we do, make sure you go out, like all of our stuff uh, with social channels on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, but also our new Boiler Warehouse channel as well. Make sure you like all of those things and get involved because we just talk all parts out there. And we are looking forward to today's episode with Brian Grindstaff on the Boiling Point. Welcome to the Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware and this is Brian Grindstaff. And always look forward to hanging out with Brian at the boilerwarehouse.com. Uh, relief valves, Brian, that's the last defense of a boiler and so very important. We've talked a lot about relief valves in other episodes, but you kind of came up with an idea about sizing. Why don't you roll with it? Yeah, so, you know, one, one of the things that we do, we have a valve shop that repairs and recertifies valves. And we've, we've got other videos that talk about what that process looks like, how often you're supposed to, you know, check your relief valves, uh, what that process looks like for you to, to either uh, repair or uh, test. Mm -hmm. You know, recertification really isn't a thing, but right. repair or test. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I at least wanted to at least talk about uh, selection and sizing a little bit. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of people that call in and they want replacement relief valves. Model number of these valves and the set pressure of these valves gets us a long way on, hey, we can quote you uh, a replacement. Right. Uh, every once in a while, you'll run into obsolete or you'll run into lead time issues where, you know, maybe that one valve isn't available and you got to come up with another brand mm -hmm. that does the same thing. In order for us to do that, um, you know, we got to know a few things. Sure. Um, we got to know uh, how many connections do you have on the boiler that have relief valves on them? Mm -hmm. What's the boiler horsepower? What's the boiler MAWP, the maximum design pressure that that boiler is rated for? Mm -hmm. Because when we select our relief valves, we got to make sure that we have enough relief valves that exceed the pounds per hour requirement for these steam boilers to relieve enough steam to make sure that if you have an overpressurized situation, you can evacuate enough steam to not overpressurize the vessel. Right. Um, so those are a couple of things that we have to know, like how many relief valves do you have? You might be asking me for one of the relief valves, but I need to know what else is there too and what their relief capacities are. Sure. You know, if we're gonna do the, and a lot of these boilers have two or three connections on the top of them, mm -hmm. well, they, they might have two big relief valves and one small relief valve to make up the total capacity. So for us, when we're doing selections, we need to know that if we're going to be crossing things over. So just a real quick question, uh, 150 PSI boiler, mm -hmm. are all relief valves then, do they have to be put at 150 PSI? They don't. And it, depending on, um, you know, the customer, you know, they may have plant requirements where they want to set them a little bit lower, mm -hmm. um, but they have to be set at what the MAWP of the vessel is. Right. So you can set them. Uh, you know, the, the VA hospitals, they have a, a staggered concept of they may set at 135, 140, 145, or 140, 145, 150. Mm -hmm. So the relief valves start to pop earlier and they're at a certain point by the time they get to the pressure vessel rating. Okay. So that's going to dictate what their operating pressure is. Okay. Because of, because of these boilers being mounted or these relief valves being mounted on the boiler, section one relief valves, um, they will start to relieve within 3% of the set pressure. So you can't butt up against where you're operating to where the valves are set. Right. right. So you got to kind of, if you're going to do that, you got to plan out what's my, what is my operating pressure. And then uh, if I'm going to stagger them, how am I going to stagger them? So I'm not uh, popping relief valves when I don't need to be. Right. Right. And now do, do the relief valves have to be on the boiler? Um, so, you know, we're talking in general terms about sizing steam relief valves on a boiler right now. Right. Um, you know, you've got hot water relief valves that yeah. are on a boiler. Uh, section one, that is a fired pressure vessel. Any fired pressure vessel should have a section one relief valve on it. Okay. Um, you also have relief valves out in the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you might have some in your header. You may have some uh, where you have pressure reducing valves. Um, relief valves are there basically to protect your equipment. 
whether that's the boiler or whether that is uh, a heat exchanger or a cooker or whatever it is, all these pieces of equipment are very expensive and you wanna add a safety feature, not only for your personnel and your people to protect them, yeah. but to protect your equipment also from being overpressurized and being damaged. Okay. So any scenario where you're stepping down in pressure from say 150 PSI down to 10 PSI, you'll probably have a pressure reducing valve, but you should also have a relief valve or a series of relief valves to be able to pr protect it if that PRV was to fail. Sure. and overpressurize. Right. So, right. you know, in those scenarios in the steam world, those are section eight relief valves. That's an unfired pressure vessel okay. um, or line mounted valves, section eight. Mm -hmm. So, and there's also non-code valves. It doesn't have to meet a code, it's just there for safety. Okay. But the codes are required for the stuff that has to have it. Right, right. Yeah. Now I notice on these that, um, you know, you have a size here Mm -hmm. Does that size have to match the uh, outlet on the boiler? Um, so typically it does not. So you can be smaller than that on the inlet side, but what you can't do is you can't reduce the outlet side. Mm. The outlet side is a vent and you know, normal piping terms in any scenarios where you have vents, you don't want to reduce a vent. That's just a general law that everybody knows, right? right but right. on relief valves, it's very important because if you're reducing a vent in a pressurized situation, it's sized to relieve at that vent size. Sure. So if you reduce that, now you're reducing the capacity of the valve and you could be creating back pressure when you shouldn't have been doing that. Right. So, you know, we've seen pictures here of funny installs where people have bushings and, you know, drain pipes coming out and you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You're creating a pressurized situation and you're taking the safety function away from that valve. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. something I wanted to point out because I know that we've seen that type of stuff and we're like, ooh. Yep, so. vents, vents should always be full size. Yeah, yep. yep. So different types of valves here. I know you've got an Apollo, um, you've got some consolidated, yep. um, and, a, and a Kunkel, of course. So. Yeah, we got a couple of different brands. I mean, this is an Apollo bronze. This is a Kunkel bronze. They look very similar. Mm -hmm. um, the consolidated, um, I think this is actually just a painted bronze valve. So both of these are actually bronze valves just painted. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, there's steel valves, there's mm -hmm. bigger flanged valves, there's uh, hot water relief valves where they actually have a temperature probe on them, their temperature and pressure valves. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different valves and a lot of different applications. Sure. And the big thing is, is just knowing what you're putting it on, making sure you're matching the application, you know the code that is supposed to be applied to it, um, and making sure that you're, you've got it sized correctly. Yeah. Well, awesome, great information. Appreciate it. Uh, if you have those questions, make sure that you get with Brian because him and his team can help you with that. But obviously, Boiler uh, University is always good to go and, and learn a little bit extra um, at the Boiler University School. Well, we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.